Yeah, verse 12. <laughs> Chapter 15 and go down to verse 12. Once you get there, if you want, please stand for the reading of God's Word. John 15, verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. The word of God for the people of God. The question was asked in a song in the 1990s. I don't know, it was a one-hit wonder song by an uh, uh, individual uh, named Hathaway. I don't know if y'all remember that, but he had a song called, What is Love? <coughs> what is Love? And I started to think, and you know, love through, through movies and music and stuff has been interpreted differently through the years. And I didn't want to lead anybody out, so I went and filmed a song that was way before I came into the world. But a lot of y'all have been here for a while. But it was back in the 1950s. Anybody alive in the 50s? Raise your hand. Find as being a mini splendored thing. It was actually a movie with, you might remember William Holden. It was a movie with William Holden, Love is a Mini Splendored Thing, but it was also a song from that movie. It was a big hit by a group called the Four Aces, called Love is a Mini Splendored Thing. Well, as you, and I can agree with that. I 100% agree that love is a mini splendored thing. If you moved into the 70s, we found out that love meant never having to say your sorry. Now, I don't know who wrote that into the movie, but somebody forgot to tell me because I have said, baby, I'm sorry, on thousands of occasions. Matter of fact, has anybody here ever, um, anybody here that has been married, married now, that's never said, I'm sorry? Sometimes love means having to say you're sorry, so I don't agree with that. As you moved into the 80s, there was a lady by the name of Pat Benatar who said, Love is a battlefield. <laughs> Once again, I can understand where Pat Benatar was coming from. Love is a lot of things. And music and TV and relationships through the years have defined love. And it does have a lot of different definitions. This question was posed to a group of four to eight year olds. What was the meaning of love? And it's a long list. And I had seen it before, but there was two of them in there that I never talked about that I wanted to mention this morning. This was asked to a group of four to eight-year-olds to define what love meant to them. Here's two of the responses. There are two kinds of love, our love and God's love, but God made both kinds of them. Isn't that something? God's love and our love, but God made both of them. And in this right here is by far... Out of the mouth of babes, this is by far one of the best definitions of love I've ever heard. God could have said magic words to make the nails fall off the cross, but he didn't. That's love. Praise the Lord. It is Valentine's week. It's a week that we are thinking about love and it doesn't matter if it's a love for a mate, if it's love for a family, love for children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, parents, sisters, brothers, uncles, aunts, and up friends. It doesn't matter. It's a week of love. And John in the gospel here makes it very clear in the gospel with Jesus speaking. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. True love is about Loving others. Loving others. True love has always been. Christ said there's no greater love than a man lay down his life for another. That is loving somebody above you. That's loving somebody more than you. The two greatest commandments. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Loving each other is one of the greatest gifts that we have. And it's a commandment from our Lord and Savior. I want you to listen to this song. It's always been one of my wife's favorite. And as I looked at it last night, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to mention this because it's a beautiful song. We don't sing it a lot, but every now and then it'll come across during a revival or something. But I want you to listen to these words. Loving God, loving each other, 
making music with my friends, <coughs> loving God and loving each other, and the story never ends. They push back from the table to listen to his words, his secret plan before he had to go. It's not complicated, don't need a lot of rules. This is all you need to know. Loving God and loving each other, making music with my friends, and the story never ends. We tend to make it harder. We build steeples out of stone. We fill with explanations of the way. But if we'd stop and listen and break a little bread, we would hear the Master say, Loving God and loving each other. Making music with my friends. Loving God. Loving each other. And the story never ends. It's what it's all about. And that's what Christ wanted to show us when He came. It's not about selfishness. It's not about greed. It's not about us. It's about loving others. It's about loving God and loving other people. And we've got to get back to that. We've got to get back to loving other people. We've got to get back to taking ourselves off of the pedestal and stepping down. Loving God and loving each other. So what can we learn? As I was thinking about this, what are some points that we can learn this week that I think the Bible, God's Word, teaches us about loving each other? And I'm going to make four, five points. And if there's a section in the bulletin that says notes, if you have a pencil, you can jot these down. But these are five points that I think, I think that God was trying to get a message to us about loving each other. Number one. People are fragile. And they need reassurance. We walk around and we put on this facade and I'm just as guilty as anybody throughout my life. This facade that everything's wonderful. Got it all together. Everything's fine. Couldn't be any better. And we put up this image. But most people are fragile. Most people, they need reassurance. They need somebody to tell them. Most of them are, have memories of a painful past. There's some people who are trapped in their past. And there's some people that were told somewhere along the way that they weren't important. And Jesus came to make sure that we do our job by letting them know, reassuring them that yes, you are important. People are fragile and they need reassurances. They need to know of God's promise that I will never leave or forsake you. They need to know that if it all comes tumbling down, that Christ is still going to be there with them. People need to feel special. <coughs> People need to feel special. I don't think we compliment each other enough. I don't think that we'd go and compliment each other enough. Tell people how beautiful they are, how wonderful they are. When they do something good, tell them they've done something good. I don't think we tell people enough and compliment people enough. I don't know if this happened when you were in school, but when I was in school, one of the things that we used to do as a practical joke, and it really isn't funny, is taking a piece of paper with tape and coming up and patting somebody on the back and sticking it to them with a big sign that says, kick me. Anybody ever seen that or done that? Yeah, a lot of y'all see it. Got somebody raising their hand. Most people wear a sign, an invisible sign that says, tell me that I matter. Tell me that I matter. A lot of people want to know that they matter. A lot of people want to know that they're important. Throughout the Bible, throughout the book, God is constantly telling us, I love you. This is how much I love you. He shows us how much He loves us. He tells us how much He loves us. He compliments. He talks about how beautiful we are. And He talks about His plans for us. This kingdom He's setting up for us. Why? Because He thinks we're that wonderful. But even though he tells us, we don't want to go and tell other people just how special they are and how much they matter. We need to get back to telling people that they matter and that they are special. Number three, I think people need hope. I have said this a thousand times. 
There is nothing worse in this world than seeing a person that has lost hope. To see a person that has given up. It is one of the most painful, hurtful things to experience. To see a person that has given up on life. That is hurting so bad that they don't want to go on living. You can turn on the news. You can look in the paper. You can talk to people. There's three things.